There was some excitement in Boynton Beach this afternoon where it took the K-9 Corps to help apprehend a bank robbery suspect. According to police reports, 63-year-old Clifford Smith of Brimfield, Illinois, entered the first bank and trust company on North Federal Highway about 12.30 this afternoon, armed with a hunting knife and a small caliber gun. He took an undetermined amount of cash before fleeing into a wooded area off South Ocean Boulevard where police picked up him and the money. In resisting arrest, the suspect suffered a minor dog bite. He was taken to Bethesda Hospital before being transported to Palm Beach County Jail, where he's been charged with armed robbery. FBI officials will join in the investigation since Smith allegedly is wanted in connection with another robbery in Cambridge, Illinois. Well, one of the most common New Year's resolutions is to take better care of your health. And the number one health problem here in the South County is heart disease, which takes thousands of lives each year. Just recently, a report in the Journal of the American Medical Association stressed the importance of exercise as a prescription for heart attack victims. Dr. Stephen Babick, a local heart specialist, feels that a specific exercise program will not only help in recovery, but he says it can also help prevent heart attacks, especially in high-risk individuals. It depends upon how you define exercise. We uh, the old tendencies were to put people at rest, in bed rest, for six weeks. Um, and I'm sure you've met many people that have been in hospitals for a month or two after their heart attack years ago. The tendency these days is to keep people in the hospital somewhere around 10 to 14 days. So uh, the day after a heart attack, we actually have people sitting up in a chair. And uh, we have an organized program where we actually get people to start uh, walking after a few days, uh, two, three, four days after their heart attack obviously with monitoring uh, closely with their heart rhythm, their blood pressures, with the nurses uh, in attendance. And um, we think that it helps promote their getting back to uh, gainful employment, getting back to their family, and uh, reduce the stress of their heart attack. Dr. Babig feels that psychological stress definitely influences one's potential for developing heart attacks. However, there are other risk factors, and we'll be talking about those tomorrow night. I'm Eleanor Shano White, reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. Boca Raton will lose its police chief February 15th. Charles McCutcheon has retired the post to become chief deputy for the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Department. Well, I've been the chief for 10 years, and uh, I think when you reach the top job, that you, you do kind of look around and you wonder whether uh, you should try something else. And I did want to try something else. I've been in Boca with the police department for almost 24 years, so I'm not really a job jumper. Sheriff Richard Willie said he's known McCutcheon a long time and that McCutcheon was his first and only choice for the chief deputy slot, being vacated by Richard Kellogg, who's retiring. Well, the end of the holidays did not bring an end to the long gasoline lines here in the South County. Some motorists today said they are waiting as long as a half hour or more to fork over as much as $1.20 a gallon for unleaded fuel. What's the problem? Station owners blame a combination of tourist influx, population increase, and lower allocations. Some stations are putting purchase limits on their gas, while others are just shutting down early. Now, all of this is particularly rough on the type A personality. That's a typical profile of the person most likely to suffer a heart attack. Really, your young business executive, uh, the man that's always trying to get ahead, uh, perfectionist, uh, just uh, constantly on the go, and ha really hasn't internalized his stress. He's not learned to externalize his stress. And I, I think that's a, a problem with our whole social environment here in the United States is that we, we do place our, ourselves under a great deal of stress, whereas other cultures have a tendency to diffuse that stress and uh, uh, help reduce their incidence of heart attacks. So no doubt about it, stress can kill you, but it's not the only factor contributing to heart disease. I think uh, one of the major risk factors, however, is family history. If your family has a strong family history of cardiovascular disease, then you most likely will develop cardiovascular disease also. Um, people that have heart hypertension are very high risk for heart disease and strokes. Uh, people with diabetes, I think cigarette smoking is a major contributor to uh, heart disease, uh, obesity, um, and there probably are a few other factors which I haven't mentioned, but those are the major ones. And which poses the greater threat, cigarette smoking or obesity? Well, Dr. Babick says there's no question that cigarette smoking has contributed more to the increase in the number of heart attacks, especially among women. In our next report, the stress test and open heart surgery. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. 
The home of the enterprise will be undergoing some changes in the near future. The Pompano Beach City Commissioners and Goodyear Blimp officials have agreed to move the airship's mooring mast 300 feet west of its present location to comply with an FAA order designed to give tower controllers at the Pompano Air Park better visibility. Moving the 28-acre blimp base will cost $150,000. It'll also force the closing of a portion of Southeast Fifth Avenue between 10th Street and Copens Road. Now, the changes are expected to take place when Goodyear builds its 85-foot hangar, and that'll be sometime later this year. Meantime, the Retired Senior Volunteer Services Program is once again back in business here in the South County area. It had to close its doors on January 1st when federal funding was cut off. But now, with monies from the United Way, the operation is recruiting volunteers once again. And we have many exciting volunteer positions that are available to our seniors. For instance, tutoring in our schools, in the court system, helping in the Medicare program, the Internal Revenue Service, which is coming up April the 15th, and uh, working in the hospitals, nursing homes, wherever there's a need for volunteers. And that need includes everyone from retired housewives to executives. So if you're over 60, if you have some time on your hands, your talents and services are badly needed. To call for an appointment, you can phone 395-8920. Well, finally, by proclamation of the mayor, this is Photography Month here in Boca Raton. To mark the occasion, several exhibits are currently on display. One is at the Gulfstream First Bank and Trust Office on Palmetto Park Road, where some of the area's best-known local photographers are showing their works. Included in the show are black and white, color, and hand-tinted prints, along with examples of some of the oldest photographic techniques. Another prize-winning collection of photographs entitled America As I See It is currently on display on the campus of Florida Atlantic University. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. Deer Deerfield Beach Police picked up 30 Haitian refugees during the pre-dawn hours today as they were walking along a bridge on North Federal Highway near the Boca Raton-Deerfield border. According to police, the immigrants, who each paid five to six hundred dollars for passage, were dropped from two boats at the Hillsborough Canal. They've been turned over to U.S. immigration officials in Miami. The latest group brings to 86 the total number of Haitians who have entered the South County area illegally since the first of the year. Meantime, both suspense and speculation are mounting at the Boca Raton Police Department over who will be named to succeed Chief Charles McCutcheon, who retires the post on February 15th to become Chief Deputy of the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Department. According to McCutcheon, all four captains in his department are qualified to occupy the big black leather chair. However, one has already ruled himself out of contention. 59-year-old Captain William Lestrange told me he'll retire soon. He says he doesn't want to be considered for the job. So that narrows the field down to three men, one of whom will be picked by city manager Jack Morehouse to be named interim police chief in the next 10 days. The youngest is Captain Peter Petraco, a 38-year-old former New Yorker who holds a master's degree in criminal justice from Nova University. Petraco has been on the force for 15 years. He's married and the father of two children. Another ex-New Yorker with 17 years on the force is Frank McGuire, who started as a patrolman, worked his way up through the ranks to captain in charge of administration. McGuire is a bachelor and a graduate of Northwestern University. Unlike McGuire and Petraco, who were non-committal about their desires to be named to the post, Captain Wayne Wright laid it on the line, admitting candidly that becoming police chief has been his longtime goal. Wright, who has headed up the Detective Bureau for the past eight years, was also quick to point out that he and Chief McCutcheon share similar backgrounds. They both come from western Pennsylvania, where the chief worked as a coal miner and where Wright worked in the steel mills near Pittsburgh. Although the city manager has the authority to name a permanent police chief, Jack Morehouse, who will retire in June, says he feels that the final choice should be made by the new city manager. I'm Eleanor Shano White, reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. Lee Iacocca, head of the Chrysler Corporation, has arrived in South Florida to be with his wife, Mary, who is listed in critical condition in the coronary intensive care unit here at the Boca Raton Community Hospital. The 55-year-old Mrs. Iacocca, who has a history of heart trouble, suffered a coronary attack on Wednesday while vacationing at the family's winter home at the Sable Point Apartments on South Ocean Boulevard. 
Her illness forced the cancellation of a meeting in New York City yesterday, which time Iacocca was expected to expand on the financially ailing automaker's nationwide refund program. It's been learned that 10 of Chrysler's top officials will fly into South Florida over the weekend to attend a closed-door meeting with Iacocca on Monday. I'm Eleanor Shano White, reporting for Channel 12 News from the South County. U.S. immigration officials have 56 Haitians in custody tonight, picked up in two separate incidents in North Broward and South Palm Beach County within the past 24 hours. A total of 31 men, 13 females, and two infants were in a group dropped off along the seawall on the intracoastal at Hillsborough Beach early last evening. A security guard spotted several of the refugees strolling leisurely along A1A about 6.30 p.m. Half dozen of them had crossed the Deerfield Beach line before being picked up by authorities there. According to reports, the Haitians, who paid from $300 to $1,000 for passage, have been turned over to the West Palm Beach Border Patrol for processing. Meantime, Boca Raton police received a call this morning from construction workers who spotted a 21-foot speedboat beach near 40th Street. Within minutes, they had rounded up another 10 Haitians who left a few pieces of clothing, some water and gasoline scattered on the beach. Well, approximately 9 a.m., uh, we received a call of some Haitians uh, on the beach some of them walking westbound on 40th Street. Uh, we came over to the area and we found the boat on the beach. We picked up uh, six female Haitians and uh, four male Haitians. They're now at the Boca Police Department waiting on the uh, Border Patrol or Immigration Authorities to come down. We believe that's all that uh, were in the boat at the time. The boat, which the Haitians powered themselves, carried a Freeport registration and is believed to be stolen. The refugees were taken to the Boca Raton police station before being transported by bus by immigration officials to Miami. Briefly, in other news, city manager Jack Morehouse says he will appoint one of the city's four police captains to become acting police chief to replace Charles McCutcheon when his retirement becomes effective February 1st. McCutcheon quit the post to become chief deputy of the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Department. I'm Eleanor Shano White, reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. In a speech before a special session of the Electronics Industries Association meeting at the Boca Raton Hotel, Senator Richard Luger, Republican from Indiana today, called for President Carter to take military action against the Soviet Union in response to the invasion of Afghanistan. The problem is our inability in the short run uh, to do very much about it. This is why the president's moves, in my judgment, have to be military moves. That is, the rearmament of this country, and specifically arms to Pakistan, through Pakistan to the Afghan rebels. Meantime, one of the major issues facing the electronics organization is the U.S. embargo on high technology exports to the Soviet Union. According to industry's president, Pete McCloskey, the move will be pointless unless other Western countries cooperate. The executives of the industry have taken the position that the, we support the president's moratorium on sales to the Soviet Union with the understanding and, and on the condition that the administration use its utmost powers to uh, get the cooperation of the U.S. allies and trading partners in their sales to the Soviet Union. At the same time, Congressman Jim Jones from Oklahoma said he feels that events on the international scene will have a positive effect on our domestic economy. I fully expect Congress to pass a tax bill this year that will provide capital recovery for capital investments, that will provide some relief from Social Security tax increases uh, that will be uh, passed by the Congress and I think will be signed by the President. Other encouraging economic news came today from Richard Everett, Vice President of Chase Manhattan Bank, who said that he predicts that the prime lending rate could drop to below 10 percent by the end of 1980. Everett also gave me his personal views on the recession. Well, if it started already, and I said there's some evidence, it's not fully persuasive, but if it started, it should be over by sometime in the late summer, I would guess. There are some parts of the economy that are still pretty strong and likely to stay strong. And that's some offset to the weakness that you see elsewhere, especially in auto sales and uh, construction of new housing. Everett added a word of caution to small investors who are putting their money in the gold market. As he put it, unless you have a lot of money, it's a risky business. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. The body of 47-year-old Mary Rashkin was pulled from a canal at Southeast 9th Avenue in Pompano Beach about noontime today. According to police reports, there were no indications of foul play. The victim was last seen by her husband about 1 o'clock this morning. 
Meantime, 18-year-old Larry Smith was killed in a construction accident at the gates of Hillsborough and Deerfield Beach about noon today. Smith was hit on the head by a backhoe. He was dead on arrival at North Brower General Hospital. Well, tonight at 7 o'clock, the Greater Boca Raton Chamber of Commerce is going to sponsor a special seminar on shoplifting, Florida's number one dollar loss crime, and one that affects each and every consumer, since according to the Florida Retail Federation, we all pay over 200 extra dollars each year in higher prices to cover the store's loss of merchandise. Joan Gommel, who heads the Chamber's Retail Committee, explains some things small shopkeepers can do to deter shoplifting. In our store, we always greet the customer when they come in so that they know we're aware of them being in the shop. Our store is set up so that we can watch them and be with them constantly and help them make their selections. Can you spot a shoplifter? Uh, not readily, but they act a little nervous and uh, they, you just are aware that they're there. <laughs> The figures are staggering. This year, retail thefts in Florida are expected to top $300 million. And according to Sergeant Mike Knoll of the Boca Raton Police, the local loss figures are conservative. A lot more serious than statistics would have us believe. Um, we make uh, roughly an arrest on the average of about one a day for shoplifting throughout our city, uh, which doesn't seem like that much. But you consider how many cases of shoplifting go unreported or even undetected. Uh, it adds up to quite a few uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. What what sort of methods do shoplifters use? Well, they've used uh, just about everything uh, from uh, simply palming the item, uh, picking it up off the counter and keeping it concealed in their hand. We've had instances of people trying to steal jewelry by putting it in their mouth and swallowing it, all the way to the other uh, extreme of women taking large objects such as uh, uh, typewriters and, and large canned hams and lifting up their dress and, and holding it between their knees and walking out of the store rather precariously. So uh, it's limited only by their ingenuity and imagination. It should be pointed out that shoplifting is not a spur-of-the-moment kids' crime. In fact, 65% of all shoplifters caught have the money to pay for the merchandise they're stealing. Is it a disease? It, perhaps. Um, uh, people talk, psychologists talk about uh, TV and the pressures of our society and the need to have and to get. And there was great pressure, psychological and emotional, to get something for nothing, to get ahead and to teach these individuals that it is a crime and there are severe punishments, hopefully will uh, keep them out of uh, as stores as shoplifters. So to put it simply, shoplifting is a serious crime. If convicted, shoplifters could face several thousand dollars in fines and up to five years in prison. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. The home of the Enterprise will be undergoing some changes in the near future. The Pompano Beach City Commissioners and Goodyear Blimp officials have agreed to move the airship's mooring mast 300 feet west of its present location to comply with an FAA order designed to give tower controllers at the Pompano Air Park better visibility. Moving the 28-acre blimp base will cost $150,000. It'll also force the closing of a portion of Southeast Fifth Avenue between 10th Street and Copens Road. Now, the changes are expected to take place when Goodyear builds its 85-foot hangar, and that'll be sometime later this year. Meantime, the Retired Senior Volunteer Services Program is once again back in business here in the South County area. It had to close its doors on January 1st when federal funding was cut off. But now, with monies from the United Way, the operation is recruiting volunteers once again. And we have many exciting volunteer positions that are available to our seniors, for instance, tutoring in our schools, in the court system, helping in the Medicare program, the Internal Revenue Service, which is coming up April the 15th, and uh, working in the hospitals, nursing homes, wherever there's a need for volunteers. And that need includes everyone from retired housewives to executives. So if you're over 60, if you have some time on your hands, your talents and services are badly needed. To call for an appointment, you can phone 395-8920. Well, finally, by proclamation of the mayor, this is Photography Month here in Boca Raton. To mark the occasion, several exhibits are currently on display. One is at the Gulfstream First Bank and Trust Office on Palmetto Park Road, where some of the area's best-known local photographers are showing their works. Included in the show are black and white, color, and hand-tinted prints, along with examples of some of the oldest photographic techniques. Another prize-winning collection of photographs entitled America As I See It is currently on display on the campus of Florida Atlantic University. I'm Eleanor Shano-White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. 
You can't separate politics from the Olympics, according to marathon swimmer Diana Nyad. The woman who became the first person to swim from Bimini to Florida last spring told Channel 12 News today that she supports President Carter's proposal to boycott the summer games in Moscow. I understand as well as they all do, because I put in all those years too, even though I'm not going. Uh, but I must say that if I were an athlete, I, I'd even stick with it. I don't think we should have been in Berlin in 36. And as much work as they put in, especially the track stars and the swimmers who have nothing else, they have no pro-life pro coming afterwards. Uh, it's such a shame, but I don't think they should be there. I mean, it's, it's unconscionable what's happening in the Middle East today and in Iran. And uh, uh, they, uh, the only... Uh, spokes word we can give is not to go to Moscow. Ms. Nyad said her next goal will be to swim 100 miles straight in open sea. She plans to make that attempt sometime next summer in Europe. Meantime, controversy again surrounds the Boca Raton airport. Local citizens groups are remaining firm in their opposition to Friday's Florida Board of Regents proposal, asking that a joint authority be organized to manage the airport. Opponents claim that since the airport is within city limits, it should be city controlled. Well, thousands of Delray Beach residents will probably have to send in another check for their utility bills and license renewals and property taxes. The city will be notifying them soon if their checks were among $73,000 worth stolen from a vault in the offices of the Finance Department early Friday. In addition, some $2,000 in cash was taken. Delray police say they have no suspects, although an intensive investigation is continuing, which includes questioning and fingerprinting of some 21 city employees. I'm Eleanor Shano White, reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton. Walter Heller brought some encouraging economic news during a visit to South County today. The former economic advisor to Presidents Kennedy and Johnson said even though we're on the threshold of a recession, he expects it to be a moderate one and of short duration. He also looks for mortgage interest rates to come down soon. I have no doubt that uh, mortgage interest rates are now beginning to crest. They'll hang up there for a while then I would expect some very mild easing. And that's going to help the cost of living because the cost of living index exaggerates both the upturn and the downturn. And the other thing is, interestingly enough, oil prices aren't going to rise as fast in 1980 as they did in 1979. When they hit the consumer level, they will rise only about half as fast this year as last year. And that's going to help us some. I think we'll get out of the double digits on inflation generally by mid-year. Heller was in town today to address a convention of pipeline contractors meeting at the Boca Raton Hotel. Meanwhile, Hugo Scheltema, ambassador of the Netherlands to the United Nations, told a news conference today he's not sure yet whether his country will send athletes to the Olympics if they're held in Moscow this summer. I think it's a matter of debate. It's also a matter of debate within the government. Um, as I say, it's not a government decision, but truly the government is in a position to pronounce itself on the desirability to participate or not. Mr. Ambassador, would the Netherlands support a boycott of trade with Iran? I don't know yet. Uh, you will have read in the newspapers that um, boycott of trade with Iran is a very difficult, very difficult proposition for a good many countries, including countries in Western Europe. And while we all agree I should say even more than 100% on the desirability that something should be done, or let me put it this way, that the problem be solved. And while we all agree on the condemnation of the actions by the terrorists in Tehran, another question is whether and to what extent we agree on certain measures proposed by the United States. Sheldon has said further he doesn't feel the power of the UN as a peacekeeping force in the world has lost its effectiveness in spite of recent Soviet Union vetoes on U.S. proposals. In other news, there are still no suspects in Friday's double murder at the Meadows Retirement Community in Deerfield Beach. According to police, Yezu Sanzu of Coral City was arrested outside this house at 1702 Southwest 19th Avenue carrying a concealed weapon. He was released on $1,000 bond. It was also Sanchez who identified the victims as 38-year-old Robert Sergener and 24-year-old Jean Capella. Police indicate the murders may have been drug-related since $50,000 worth of cocaine and two small weapons were found inside the house. I'm Eleanor Shano White reporting from the South County Bureau in Boca Raton.